Okay then gang, so in the last lesson we created an HTTP function which fired via a certain URL or endpoint. Now in this lesson we're going to create another HTTP function, this time though we're going to create a callable function which we can call directly from our code. So to create this callable function we're going to remain inside index.js where we created the other two functions right here and down below those I'm going to do another comment that says HTTP callable function. Okay, so again, we're going to say export dots and then give this function a name because any function that we create is going to live on this export object. And I'm going to call this say hello. And I'm going to set that equal to functions dot HTTPS, much like we did with these on request functions up here. But instead now of on request, I'm going to say on call and this also takes in a callback function which fires when this is invoked okay so unlike on request which takes in a request object and a response object this function right here when we use an on call function takes in two different arguments the first one is a data object and that represents any data that we send to this function when we call it from our code and the second one is a context object which has additional information available to us and one of those bits of information is to do with the authentication status of the user and we're going to see that in action later on but for now all we're going to do is just return a simple string so i'm going to say return and i'm going to use template strings which is the back ticks and that's under the escape key on my keyboard and i'm just going to say hello ninjas the reason I've used a template string is because later on we're going to output some dynamic data inside this string and we can do that. We can output variables inside a template string in JavaScript. So then that's all I'm doing. I'm just returning a simple string. Much like we did up here, we sent a response which was a string. This does the same thing. Now this time we're using the return keyword and not response.send and that's because we don't get the response object up here. So in order to send a response this time we return something. Okay so when we use the on request method right here we use the response object to send a response. When we use an on call method, we don't get the response object, so we just return a response like this. So if I now save this, I could go ahead and deploy this by saying Firebase deploy only functions, and I'm gonna click enter. Now, while that is deploying, I'm now gonna do the front end because we now need to call this function from our front end code. So how are we gonna do that? Well, first of all, I'm going to open up the public folder and I'm going to go to the index file right here. And I want to add a button at the bottom of this file because when a user clicks on this button, that's the point that we're going to then call the function, right? So if I go to the bottom of the section, we'll just do it inside here. I'm going to create a button and that is going to say, say hello. Spell this correctly, like so. Now, if I save this and preview over here, we should see a button down at the bottom. So I want a user to click on this. And at that point in our front end JavaScript code, what we're going to do is call that callable function in Firebase. So how do we do that exactly? Well, first of all, we need to get a handle of this button right here so we can attach an event listener to it so we can react when a user clicks on it. So if I now go to the JavaScript app.js file over here, we currently have all of our modal JavaScript at the top. Below that, I'm going to do a little comment to say, say hello function call, just so we know where everything is inside here. And I'm going to grab a reference to this button right here. Now to do that, let's give this a class of call so we can just reach in and grab that element with that class to do that i'll say const button is equal to documents dot query selector and then inside here we just want the dot call class so it's going to go out and grab that button next we need to take that button and we need to add an event listener to it that event listener is going to be a click event so when we click that button we're going to do something now we don't need the event object because we don't need anything from the event object. Instead, what we need to do is get a reference, first of all, to our Firebase cloud function that we want to call. So let me just do a comment to say that's what we're going to do first of all. So get function reference 
like so. And we're going to store this reference in a constant and it's going to be called say hello. You can call it what you want, but I always call the constant the same name as the function I'm getting a reference to. And we called that function over here say hello. So I'm going to store it in this constant and then I'm going to set that equal to Firebase. And we have access to this Firebase object right here because in our index.html file, we imported the Firebase core library, right? Now, on that Firebase object, I want to interact with the functions. Now, I can say dots and then functions, which is a function in itself, a method to invoke that. And we can do this. We can use this method right here because we added this script right here, Firebase functions. If we didn't add that, we couldn't add that functions call right here. So once we've got a reference to the functions, we can then say what type of function we're going to grab. And it's going to be an HTTPS callable function. So HTTPS callable like so. And then in parentheses, we pass in the callable function we want to get a reference to. And that was say hello. So I hope that makes sense. We're using the Firebase object. Then we're using the functions method on that. And from there, we're saying we want to get a reference to an HTTPS callable function, spell that correctly. And the function that we want to reference to is the say hello function. So that is going to look through all of our cloud functions for a callable function called say hello. And it's going to find that right here because it's a callable function and it's called say hello. So now we have a reference to that function. And if we want to actually call that function, if we want to invoke it, all we do is say, say hello, which is this reference right here and invoke it. So essentially what this does is grab that cloud function for us and store it in this constant. Then we're just invoking it using parentheses. So this right here will go out and it will call that cloud function and then we'll get a response. It's going to send that response programmatically so we can access it here in the code. So because this is asynchronous and it's going to take some time to do, it actually returns a promise. And that promise fires a callback function when the function has been executed and it returns that response. So I can attach a dot then method to this and pass in a function with the result that we get back from the cloud function. So it invokes this function, it waits for it to run. And when we returned some kind of response, which is this thing right here, then we get access to that in a callback function inside the then method. So then what we could do is just log out this to the console. And the way that we get the data off that result is by saying result.data. And that gets us whatever is returned right here. So I could say console, dot log and it's going to be result dot data. So if I save this now and come over here and refresh, the Firebase function has deployed successfully. So this should work. I'm now going to open up the console. So console over here, make this a bit smaller and I'm going to click on say hello. Now again, this might take 10 seconds, probably less the first time you do it. But the more you run cloud functions, like I say, the quicker they will become. And now we can see that Hello Ninja string in the console. Awesome. So again, all we've done is we've grabbed a reference to the function like this and stored it. We've invoked that cloud function using parentheses. This returns a promise. And so we can tack on a dot then method to it. And when that result comes back from the Firebase function, we get access to it. And the result contains the data that is actually returned to us, this thing right here. And so we can log that to the console. Now, sometimes we want to pass along information to the cloud function. So over here, for example, we could access it on this object. So how do we do that? Well, dead simple. Inside app.js, I'm just going to pass through an object right here. And this object represents now the data that we send. So we can attach different properties to this. So I'm just going to say that the name property is going to be Sean. You could add different properties if you wanted to. I'm just tacking on a name property. Now this sends this data object with the request when it invokes it and it passes it in to the data right here. So we can access that name property now on this data. 
So over here, I could say const name is equal to the data object dot name like so. That's how we can access it. Now, if I wanted to output that in the string over here, I could do. And the way we output a variable inside a template string is by using dollar curly braces. Then I'm just going to output the name constant that we grab right here. And now we're returning that. So it should now be hello, Sean, because we passed through Sean as the name property. So I'm going to deploy this again, Firebase deploy only functions. And then once that's done, I'm going to come over to our project. I'm going to refresh over here just to catch any changes. And then I'm going to invoke that function again by clicking on say hello. And let's see if this works. Hello, Sean. So no longer hello ninjas. Hello, Sean. So it grabbed that data that we sent along right here from the data object right here. And it output that in the string, which we then returned to the client, the browser. And we grabbed from the result and we output it to the console. So now we've seen how to create two types of different functions. We've seen the on request function and also the on call function. We've seen how to deploy these and also how to invoke these. So hopefully now you're beginning to get kind of a good idea of how Firebase functions work. And now we know that what I'd like to do is bring authentication into the mix so we can start to work with authentication inside these cloud functions as well. Now to do that, we're going to have to set up authentication on the front end and we are going to be using Firebase authentication to do this. So we're going to hook up a couple of modals to the front end similar to how we've done the request modal right here. So we'll work on that in the next tutorial.